I am very excited to be speaking with Representative Wexton of Virginia's 10th Congressional District. Representative Wexton serves on the House Committee on Appropriations and the House Committee on the Budget. She is also the founder of the Congressional Task Force on Digital Citizenship and has been named co-chair of the App Challenge for the 117th Congress. Welcome, Representative Wexton. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me today. Thanks, Amanda. It's great to be with you. So let's jump into the questions. My first one, the Congressional App Challenge's mission is to inspire middle and high school students to learn to code and pursue careers in STEM and computer science. So why do you think students should participate in the Congressional App Challenge? Because it's a wonderful way to be exposed to, to app writing and to coding. You don't need any coding, coding experience to enroll and to, to give it a try. And you know, these are, this is a very, very fast growing area. It's something where, where these jobs are gonna keep growing and keep being needed. So I think it's a fantastic opportunity for middle and high school students to really try it out and see what they think. Great. And you've been hosting the App Challenge since 2019. What would you say is your favorite memory of interacting with the students who take part in the challenge? Well, they get so excited to show you their apps and really <laughs> quite remarkable what they managed to come up with. You know, our, our winner from 2019 created an app that, that measured stream health because, because it was something that he was very passionate about. He was, he was involved with an environmental group and so he would collect his data and come up with this, this stream app that would, that would measure the health of, of local streams against those throughout the Commonwealth of Virginia. And our, our winner last year, our winner, winning team last year created an app that used AI to, uh, to analyze retinal images to determine if somebody was at risk for, for retinal disease, things like macular de degeneration and other things like that. I mean, they, 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 they said up right up front that it was no substitute for, for a doctor, but it's a good start <laughs> and really, really remarkable what they were able to accomplish with AI. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we have some really incredibly talented kids. Another, another, uh, another app challenge participant created an app that, that, uh, that could sense like your motion and then it interacted with an interactive stop sign and it would cause lights around the stop sign to flash until you actually came to a stop. And then once, once, they, once the lights turned solid then you could move forward. So it was really fascinating what kids came up with. And, and I think there's some commercial applications for a lot of what they came up with as well. I agree. So in the app challenge, we have students of all coding abilities participating. What advice would you have for students who are interested in the challenge? Give it a try. You know, you don't need any prior coding experience. You're going to learn something. You're going to have a good time. And, and who knows, it could, could spark a passion that you, want to, that you want to follow and continue to learn more about. So give it a try. There's no, there's no commitment. There's no, no harm in doing so. And you could turn out to find a new career. I completely agree. And this is the seventh year we're hosting the App Challenge in the United States. What do you think the long-term benefits of hosting such a challenge are? Well, I think that the longer that we host it, the more sustainable it becomes and the more the word of mouth gets out and more people want to participate. Um, so, you know, I know that in our high schools, kids look forward to participating in the App Challenge. We have kids who start in middle school and continue on through high school. And so, you know, and these are kids who want to go into careers in computer science and coding and also in app development. So, you know, as I mentioned, these are these are jobs that are just only going to continue to grow. And this is a fantastic opportunity for kids who don't have that kind of background to try it out and see what they think. Now, you are one of the founding members of the Congressional Task Force on Digital Citizenship with the mission to better support Americans with the tools and resources for the digital world. So as an expert on the digital world, what do you believe to be the main barriers to equity in the tech industry? And what do you think Congress should do about it? Well, one of the biggest barriers that we've seen is that, is that there's not a lot of gender equity in the STEM fields. You know, women are underrepresented in engineering and computer science. And that's something that needs to change. When I was growing up, women were always told, girls were always told, oh, math and science, that's for boys. And that's just ridiculous. I mean, I'm glad to see that that's not happening anymore, but we need to make sure that women and girls understand that these are great careers for them and that, 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 that diversity and equity is so important, not just for them and for, you know, because these are good paying jobs that are gonna, that are gonna continue to grow, but also because, because women bring things to the table that, that, that men don't. And so having that, that diversity in your workforce is gonna result in a much better product. Yes, I completely agree. And 
<laughs> Additionally, the switch to online learning this past year revealed significant learning equity gaps across the nation. What do you believe to be the greatest challenge to educational equity? Well, there are a lot of challenges to educational equity, but as we learned during COVID, the digital divide is real, you know? I mean, I have people in my district, and my district is just outside of Washington, D.C., who had to drive to local libraries to, to sit in the parking lot to get to try and get a free Wi-Fi signal because they just don't because they don't have access to broadband. So access to quality high speed internet is so, so important, not just for not just for businesses and, and for kids in digital learning uh, situations, but just to be able to fully to fully take advantage of the curriculum and to be able to compete. So I think that that's something that's extremely important. And in Congress, we've been working very, very hard to close that digital divide through 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 uh, programs that that close the homework gap and, and expand access to affordable uh, high speed Internet throughout the country. Great. And on another note, you have just been named co-chair of the Congressional App Challenge, which is very exciting. Um, what are you most excited for with your new role? Well, I'm really excited to help cheerlead for this program because I think it's so fantastic and I'm so amazed by what the kids have been able to come up with. But I also would like to, you know, my part of the world has a lot of very, you know, we have our own science and tech, uh, computer science and, and tech uh, high school here in Loudoun County where I live and in Fairfax County. I mean, we've got Thomas Jefferson High School, which is which is world renowned. But not all the not all the the parts of, of this country or even my congressional district have the same opportunities. So I want to make sure that we that we encourage other kids to come and participate, and that it's not just those who are already on the science and tech, and computer computer coding uh, tracks, so that we expose as many kids as possible to this great new career. Awesome. And what is your favorite phone on your what is your favorite app on your phone right now? Hmm. Well, I do, I do, uh, I listen to a lot of podcasts, so that's, so that's one of the things, but I also, I've, I've gotten addicted to Wordscapes, which is a, a word scramble game, mm -hmm. which is supposed to keep your brain a little bit sharper. I'm not sure about that, but it is fun, and it's very, very fun when you fill in everything, and, and all the, all the, you know, all the letters uh, disappear. <laughs> And for my last question, what is the latest piece of technology that excites you? Well, there's so much going on in the technology realm, but one thing that really makes me very excited and I think has great potential is autonomous flying vehicles. You know, I got to visit one of my constituent businesses that does a lot in autonomous flying vehicles and it's super cool. They've got a giant plane with solar panels on it that can just stay up above the above the cloud cover and circle an area for as long as it as long as for for weeks even maybe um and you know when when hurricane maria hit puerto rico having something like that up there with with uh internet access and, and satellite you know and satellite access on on that really would have helped the people with the communications issues also autonomous vehicles for things like delivery package delivery and for things like people you know like transportation I mean, the, the possibilities are endless. So I think that this is one area where the technology is advancing very quickly um, and something where we're gonna have to make sure in the federal government that we are not, that we are not creating regulatory barriers to this wonderful new technology. <laughs> yeah, those both sound very cool. Um, so that's it I have. That's all I have for today. But thank you so much for taking the time to speak to me. And for our students watching, remember, the 2021 Congressional App Challenge is live, so you can register and submit your apps now until November 1st. Thank you. Thank you.